This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now that we've discussed how sites control replication traffic and logon traffic, we need to look at how to configure sites and subnets. First, let's define them. A site is technically defined as zero, one, or more subnets that are connected by high-speed reliable links. And that sounds a little bit odd because they say zero. Well, how can it be zero? Uh, basically because you can create a site and not create any subnets. In fact, that's the default setup. So typically when we create sites, it's going to contain subnet objects. What are subnet objects? Well, they are logical objects within Active Directory that correspond to the physical network segments that, are, that make up a given uh, location. Okay, now there's a single site by default. It's called default first site name uh, and no subnet objects. So all domain controllers would, be, would go into that site. What I'm going to do is you know, determine which sites we're actually going to create. Then I'll create the site within Active Directory, name it appropriately. Usually it's you know, for the given location. Then I'll create subnet objects and those subnet objects will tie in with the subnetworks that are used in that given location. So when we create them, it'll be, you know, the 192.168.1.0 network slash 24 is used for the New York site. Uh, and so that's the way in which we'll go about creating sites and then subnet objects and linking them to a specific site. Now, once we've created them, we then have to make sure that the domain controllers are in the appropriate place. Keep in mind, if sites already exist, if you've already created them, when you go to install Active Directory on a domain controller or a, prospect, a prospective domain controller, then you will be asked which site to place that domain controller in. Uh, however, assuming you'd already installed before you had created sites, then I would just need to move them. They can be manually moved using Active Directory Sites and Services, which is one of the pre-configured administrative tools, uh, or as we said, during installation, they can be automatically placed there. Uh, login traffic will already be controlled at this point. As soon as the domain controllers are in the appropriate site and dynamic update has happened, so we would reboot those machines or restart the net logon service, then they will register service records in DNS for their, uh, for their specific site. And client login requests will then start being directed to a domain controller in that physical uh, location. Now, what other things do we need to have and think about when we're dealing with sites? Well, at a minimum, each site should contain a local DNS server and at least one domain controller. Uh, we ought to, if at all possible, have more than that, but this is basically the minimum. A choice of putting a global catalog server into the site is optional, and that's going to be based on the number of domains in the forest. Uh, basically, if you only have a single domain, if you only have a single domain, then every machine should be a global catalog server because they are not going to have any more information than any other domain controller. Thus, it is not going to increase replication, but you allow them to perform functions like expanding group membership of universal groups, of facilitating user principal name logins, the things that a global catalog server can do. Uh, and so if you only have one domain, every DC should be a global catalog. If you have more than one domain, then making a machine a global catalog server in a site can greatly increase the amount of replication to that machine. And so then I have to be a little bit careful as to how I do that. And it'll be based on most likely number of users in the site, site aware applications in the site, and the amount of bandwidth uh, that's available on the WAN link for replication. Okay? And so all of those will be factors in determining whether or not you should place a global catalog server in that site. The other option, if you don't want to place a global catalog server in the site, is something known as universal group membership caching, and that's done at the site level. Uh, this ensures that if a global catalog server is not available uh, at authentication, the login request is not denied. The problem is, is if you, if you or I tried to log in and we can't hit a domain controller, 
uh, we can't find a domain controller because our network's disconnected or we're having a problem. Well, if we have logged in before, then we will be able to log in with cached credentials. However, if you can hit a domain controller, but your domain controller cannot communicate with a global catalog server, then you will be denied authentication. And the reason is, is because it would be a security risk due to the fact that you might be a member of a universal uh, group that's in an explicit deny entry on an access control list. And, and so this, this fixes that situation. If a global catalog server is not located in the site and it's not available, uh, you've cached universal group membership information. It caches logon information the first time a user authenticates and then it periodically updates. But it's enabled at the site level and it would only be enabled on sites where a global catalog server is not present. And so we've certainly taken this a step further and, and kind of thrown this in, but these are some of the decision factors when it comes to creating a site, what servers should be at the site, uh, and so I, I just wanted to mention those things now as well. So once we've decided that these are our physical locations that we want represented as sites in Active Directory, we are then required to create sites and the associated subnet objects. We'll use the Active Directory uh, sites and services pre-configured administrative tool to do that. And let's take a look uh, at performing this uh, by way of a demonstration. 